Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this morning's worship. As we gather together in praise of God today, we give thanks for God's holy word, for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, for the word of God among us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> holy God, we adore you for who you are and what you have done. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, creator and sustainer of all that is. We thank you for your wonderful gifts of grace and truth. You have revealed yourself to us in your word and in your works. You have forgiven us our sins and healed our wounds. You have filled us with joy and peace in believing. We adore you, O God, with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for your patience with us and the way you reach out to us, always trying to teach us new things and old things, for wanting to guide us through our journey in the world so we can become more like you and walk in your way. We bring to you today some of the issues and people on our minds and in our hearts, asking for your help, your presence in those issues with those people, and for wisdom and direction for ourselves so we can serve you in the world more effectively. We pray for the Power Olympic Games taking place and the athletes training for their events. We ask that you give them determination and help them make the most of their abilities and strengths and months and years of training for those events. We pray that we may realize in our own lives the patience and staying power and determination that would benefit us in our faith lives too. We pray for the people on our minds at the moment. We ask for healing for those who are undergoing treatment for serious illnesses and conditions, those receiving treatment and care for cancer, for those on chemotherapy, that they may be able to cope with the side effects. We ask for your wisdom and your guidance for the health professionals treating them. We bring the feelings of their friends and relatives to you, Lord, and ask you to help them to know how best to help them, how best to pray for them, and to get through this time more fruitfully and feeling that they can be of real help. We ask for more resources to be made available where they are in short supply and are needed. Lord, we bring to you the teachers, pupils and students returning back to school and college after the summer break. May they feel refreshed in body and mind and spirit able and willing to learn to their best of their ability. Enthuse both teacher and student with an inquiring mind to examine and learn about the wonderful world we live in. We ask for your love and joy and knowledge to touch lives that are open to you this year. Heavenly God, we bring ourselves to you. We ask for your help in following Jesus more closely day by day. Give us the willpower to stay on course and win the race of faith, confident that you are with us at every step. May you make us determined to work for justice wherever we feel it is most needed. May you show us opportunities to help build up your kingdom in our midst and equip us to serve. Help us to listen to your word more attentively so that we can be transformed by it and therefore become means a means of transformation in the world around us too. We pray that you will bless us this coming week and help us to be not only hearers of your word, but also become doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, and then verses 6 to 9. Now, Israel, hear the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them, so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I give you. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations, 
people will hear about all these decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have the gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things that your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Our second reading is from James chapter 1, is verses 17 to 27. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become anger, angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in all they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. One of the founders of the USA and active intellectuals and influences of the 1700s, Benjamin Franklin, is credited with saying, well done is better than well said. A person can go all through their life talking about what is good for society to do, yet not do anything about it. Not do anything about it themselves, nor encourage others around them to work for that good to come into play. The person who actually brings that good thing about in the world is the one who has achieved more by their actions than the previous person with all their fine words and intentions. James writes his advice to Christians who are living in scattered communities and are finding themselves as different from the other people around them. They have different customs and beliefs because of their religious faith in God and their daily walk in, with Jesus as committed Christians. The people amongst whom they live do not always understand why they believe what they believe, nor why they do the things the way that they do them. Sometimes the Christians in their community do not want to get involved in certain practices, whether social or business, because it conflicts with their Christian faith. James, Jesus' brother, tries to help these people of faith who sometimes feel that they are misfits living in a foreign culture that doesn't look to Jesus in their daily life. James encourages these Christians and also us today as what is written for them about the nature of Jesus and God is just as valuable and worth remembering. Those whom God chooses to adopt as his children because of what Jesus did for us by dying on the cross and bringing us into his kingdom the promise stands all down the ages. God's light and truth shine just as brightly to, to us as those first Christians. Both they and us have experienced this second birth and future followers will do the same in years to come so that we can become blessed by God in this way and continue to receive the gifts of God in our daily walk with the Lord. We are blessed by God and given gifts by God so that we can influence the world, influence our communities and the people we engage with on a daily basis. 
we are to influence them by making known the word of God and through his truth and his wisdom. All of this, Jesus translates into the action of his followers, aiming to transform life in the here and the now. Therefore, James says that Christians need to live out their beliefs. We need to put into practice what we know is of value to God in this world. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, James advises. We are to leave behind what is morally suspicious and the evil that we come across in the world, not let it direct our thoughts or hearts or actions, and focus on what is honest and upbuilding and true. If we listen to God's word and follow Jesus day by day, then we will clearly know what is wholesome to be involved in and how to behave towards others. So then we will not imitate those we come into contact with who couldn't care less about any other person in the world apart from themselves. The people who do not follow the rules which are meant to enhance the common good. It doesn't mean that Christians are perfect in every way, but they do realize that they are on show in the world and ought to bring honor to the Lord and to not disrepute. When these words were written, James had in mind issues that were prevalent in society at his time and in the cultures where the followers of Jesus had been scattered by persecution at home. In our time and place, the issues may be different, however, they are just as necessary to watch out for. Sometimes it may not be you in person that would think of doing these things, yet other members of a group of colleagues might be less wary of getting involved in certain behaviors. When this happens, you may just get taken along with them. They influence you to their, your detriment rather than you influencing them for their good. I'm thinking of the kinds of misdemeanors which many people might think they can get away with with a large percent of the time in society today. Drink driving, speeding, turning right into a road where the sign says no right turn. Dropping litter in the car park rather than walking over to the rubbish bin. Fly tipping on a larger scale and spoiling or polluting the environment. Just recently in the news, there have been requests for police to take seriously the offences of upskirting that happen in public places and are reported by victims or members of the public who have seen it taking place. From time to time, we hear about the posting of indecent images of a colleague online without their permission. Then there's domestic violence and intimidation. People around the victims do not always get to see what is really going on behind closed doors. When it comes to gossip, though, it can take many forms, some considered to be more serious because it's aimed against an individual or individuals and is slanderous or libelous. Gossip can still do damage when particular individuals are not being targeted. Spreading rumours or gossip about certain groups of people can cause untold harm when the comments build up over time and are taken on board without question by more and more people. For example, comments made about immigrants, the disabled, other faiths, people on low incomes or out of work, and many others. The problem here is that very often people start to believe the so-called facts that they are repeating or passing on to friends. When certain practices and behavior gets out of hand, James realizes that we may not recognize that things have got so bad with our attitudes and lack of empathy with others. He advises that we do not merely listen to the word and so deceive ourselves. We must do what it says, put what we hear into action. Then our faith in the Lord is not in vain. We must not simply be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. It's a healthy practice from time to time to reflect on where we are up to in putting what we believe into action. James uses the image of the person who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, as being like someone who looks at their faith, face in a mirror, then goes away and immediately forgets what they look like. It is better that we take a good look at ourselves and 
where we find ourselves and our attitudes and actions lacking, we adjust our behaviour by listening closely to what God is saying to us and putting what is said into deeds and action in our lives. James encourages us that when we put into practice what we hear from God, then we will find true blessing. This gossiping needs to be nipped in the bud by Christians because sometimes we may fall foul of considering ourselves to be better than the people we are talking about. James picks out such people for comment. He says, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. His remedy is to put our faith into action. In his day, he gives as an example, look after orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. When we think about it, listening to what God has to say to us through his word, whether it is when we're praying about what matters to us in the world most, or when we read our Bibles, or in fact watching the news and learning about what's going on around us, the fact that we need to formulate our own response to it is very helpful to us. We can grow in our faith when we understand issues better so that we can pray about them more meaningfully. And then we can work out ways to do our bit by caring for others in society, by empathising with certain groups of people and supporting those in need. We can start to do more to look after our world and the environment. We can get to know people who are different from ourselves so that we can understand one another better. But most of all, we can bring a halt to the tendency to gossip and also spend time checking out the truth of what we read and hear. Then we will be able to gaze into the mirror of faith and see our reflection and to think to ourselves that we are truly blessed by God for we are well and truly a child of God, recognisable for being a follower of Jesus. We are a Christian by name and by nature, by faith and by action. We are hearers of the word and doers of the word. Let us pray. We go as this service is ended, but our service in the world now begins. May God strengthen and encourage us as we go to live lives of gratitude, spilling over into loving responses of joyful caring. Act in us, O God. Care through us, O God. Teach us to be gentle with the whole of creation. Inspire us to live as Jesus taught us. Open our hearts to your ways, nurturing us your compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Uh